We are going over a lot of details in this chapter, and I want to make sure that in the midst of going over all those details, we don't lose sight of the big picture. And, and I also just wanna make sure that I've been really clear about some of the things I've talked about. So I wanna review a little bit in this video uh, the main types of research that, that you might see, the main ways that we can approach a study. And the way I think about it is in terms of three different possibilities. One is that we just, and we've talked about all of this before, we just measure some variables. So uh, we might look at uh, age or height or weight or anxiety or political affiliation or gender, but we're just measuring those variables and trying to describe what, what the current state of them is in a particular population. So we might say the average age in this area is 32 or the average income is $44,000 per year. Uh, whatever it is, we're just trying to measure and describe the current state of those variables. And there's nothing wrong with that approach at all. That's a very valuable approach. It can give uh, very good, useful information. Uh, but we often want to go beyond that. We don't want to just measure variables, but we want to, to measure them and then look for, look for relationships between those variables. So we might want to measure, say, height and measure income and see is, is there a relationship between those variables? Do taller people, for example, tend to make more money? Uh, and again, by the way, by relationships, what we're saying is that uh, when one variable changes, we're seeing some, some consistent predictable change in another variable. So we know that those variables are connected, they're related in some way. But the limitation here is that we don't know exactly how they're related. So the way we say this is that we say correlation does not imply causation. So the example that I always like for that is, uh, is the fact that uh, if you were to gather data on snake bites and you were to gather data on ice cream sales, you would find probably a very good correlation between ice cream sales and snake bites. As ice cream sales go up, snake bites go up. So they're changing together, they're changing in a, in a way that is consistent and predictable. But very obviously, buying ice cream does not cause you to get bitten by a snake. So what we see is that just because a, a variable, uh, the changes in one variable are consistently associated with changes in the other doesn't mean the changes in one variable are causing changes in the other. And the reason why that is the case, the reason why we cannot say that the one is causing the other is because there are alternative explanations that could account for that covariance, that the changes, the way they change together could be accounted for by an alternative explanation. In that case, uh, with the snake bites and the ice cream sales, the alternative explanation is pretty obviously the weather, that as it gets warmer during the summer, uh, people both go out and are more likely to get bitten by snakes. So uh, snake bites are caused, uh, an increase in snake bites is caused by an increase in temperature. And that increase in temperature also independently causes people to buy more ice cream. So yes, there is a consistent relationship between ice cream sales and snake bites, but it's not a causal relationship. So that's the third possibility, is that we go beyond just looking for relationships and we try to demonstrate causality. So we try to prove, well, the way I'll say this is we prove that changes in one variable cause changes in the other. And the key to doing that is that we have to be able to rule out all other reasonable explanations. And the typical way of doing that is by conducting an experiment. There are other possibilities that we'll talk about, but the typical way for doing this, the easiest way to do this is to conduct an experiment. And we will talk in more detail about how you do experiments. But the key idea is that an experiment is done for the purpose of showing that one variable, uh, changes in one variable cause changes in another. So 
essentially any study that you look at, you're going to see that it fits into one of these three categories, that the people were just looking at variables, uh, just measuring them and describing them, or they were looking at variables, measuring variables, and trying to show that there was some relationship between those variables, or that they were going beyond that, conducting an experiment, or in some way trying to prove uh, some the, that there's a causal link between the variables that changes in one variable cause changes in another now the last thing that i want to add here is you know we've been talking about the idea of external validity and internal validity and i want to show how that relates here essentially all of these things uh, external validity the concept is relevant to all of these studies so this applies to all three different types if we were measuring variables well, we might want to measure them in a sample and then see if we can generalize that to the population. And that's the idea of external validity. Do your conclusions hold true outside of the conditions where you studied them? So you studied them in the sample. Do they also hold true in the population? That could, that could be just as much of an issue if you're looking for relationships. Do these relationships hold true in the population at large? Does this causal relationship uh, that we've got here, does this also hold true in the population at large? So external validity is relevant to all three of these types of research, and hopefully that is, is pretty clear. With internal validity, it, it basically only applies to this last uh, possibility, this last type of research that you might be doing. This is where internal validity comes into play because internal validity again i think that the name is pretty poor because it implies just any kind of validity having to do with the issues that are internal to your study and not you know not having to do with generalizing to the outside world and if that was how we used it it would be a very good term uh, but it's usually used specifically to talk about experiments so we're looking at the validity of the experiment were we able to rule out all of the alternative explanations was it a well-conducted experiment in other words were we able to show that one thing caused another so internal validity really has to do with experiments and with demonstrating causality at least in the way that it is that is probably most often used so hopefully again that gives you an overall picture of what we're talking about uh, because everything else, all the little details, all the little terms to memorize, uh, they all fit into this framework.